Jonathan Nunez from Torch. Uh, we're here in, now that's class in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I'm just going to show you my pedal board. No sound before the surprise. For my pedal setup, I try to keep it pretty simple. Um, also, with the idea that if something goes wrong live, I can hopefully get to it as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, having moved from bass to guitar uh, and played guitar on a lot of our records, whether it was texture or some noise stuff or licks or even solos, um, I basically built this pedal board around what uh, feels comfortable for me, allows me to do different gain stages. Even though we're a loud band, it'd be cool to have some dynamics. And um, also, uh, with the pedals I have, I like the idea of building atmosphere in, in you know certain levels. Uh, so we'll go through that and uh, yeah, just try to keep it as simple as possible because, I don't know, maybe because I'm a bass player, I had a much smaller pedal board and I didn't want to show up and be like, I'm a guitar guy now. And everyone's kind of like, no. So yeah, so basically, yeah, the, the Boss tuner can't go wrong. Um, I've heard there's other ones that people tend to like more. For me, I can trust it from my A to high E, but we have an octave tuning going on and unfortunately that guy can't really uh, be trusted. So there always needs to be like a kind of turn your volume up a little bit and check it by ear before we play. But uh, for the most part, it works well. Uh, I've had it for some time, so it works. Uh, next up is actually a pedal that I designed with a good friend, Gary Phillips, for a company I started when I uh, switched over from guitar to bass. I wasn't really happy with certain, you know, stuff that I, w I had access to, I guess, and coming from the bass world, I needed to feel it as well as hear it, and certain things about the gain I enjoyed from, like, tube heads, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of background went into both as a recording engineer and a musician, went into designing this stuff. So this is, for me, the Tetra Fet uh, is kind of like a two preamp vibe. You can even play into a power amp. And it doesn't really trim away at your low end. If you're doing flying shows, you can trust it. So it's really helpful. It gives me the next like lift, both volume and gain-wise. Um, and then those two feed into this loop pedal. And uh, then we go into my, as you can see, it's laid out in a very fancy way. Um, I have, although it says delay, it's everything, except for the loop pedal, which we'll get to, but um, the delay basically goes into a boost, another one that was developed by us, uh, something that allows you to go full range or just high pass. I technically uh, see use for both, but for me, I always keep it in full. I like it, I like the depth, I guess. Next up, uh, honestly, one of my favorite pedals, the Arpanoid, which I use in a very primitive way. But like, I feel almost like a caveman. It can do so much more, but it gives me this depth, almost synth-like uh, low end and fullness that uh, really rounds out the this, this solos or leads, or even just noisy stuff. Um, definitely makes me feel more confident going into lead stuff. But uh, I basically have it set so it does what I was hoping, uh, like whammy pedals or I don't know, other octave pedals would do, but it just, they always sounded like glitchy, kind of, I hate to say, I'm not trying to bash anybody, but like noisy, and really synthetic, where this, to me, you can really go into like that organ territory where it sounds like a, an organ with like a fuzz pedal on it or something. Although you can play it clean, it does have this little bit of dirge or like mid-range push that I like. It really makes the sound pop, and uh, you know, you have the wet and dry, um, yeah, I, I really, I mean, I feel like I could compile a whole record based off this pedal. Um, in fact, one of the songs on the record uh, has that as like the main sound, um, the closer on the admission on your album. Next up is the Echo Rec. Um, I really like that. That is my like primary always on delay. And I have it set probably to something like quarter notes. Um, it has a nice little shimmer wash thing going on. Really useful for like the more straightforward leads. And uh, if that's not enough, I jump over here to the Avalanche, which we'll get to in a minute, which has really saved my ass in really minimizing the pedal board and not having uh, three to four other pedals. 
um, and gives me this sound that I got on the record for certain parts. But yeah, so, you know, the Echo Rec is always on, along with the Arpanoid and the Boost, and it basically uh, is just my, my simple and always on delay. Now, when I want to build or if I'm, I turn something on, I'm like, holy shit, this is way too dry. Uh, I just throw on the Avalanche and we're fucking cruising. It's awesome. It really, um, there's a song, the title track on the record, where I used, and I try to document this stuff. And you hear bands like documenting stuff because they forget and I figured I wouldn't, but I did. But I think somewhere I've written down, but even still, I'd rather just try to like recreate it from scratch. And luckily, I kind of like knew that this was going to be the, the gateway to minimizing the pedal board and getting those sounds. A uh, combination of reverse reverbs, uh, multiple delays, and possibly, uh, oh yeah, and uh, a Boss PN2. For like a slight movement before the delays, and it also has like this little boost somewhere in the upper mid range or something that I really like, so, uh, you know, you see, you see a lot of people with nice big pedal boards, but I just wanted to keep it simple. And this really knocks it out of the park for me. Um, again, it, it's basically doing what three to four pedals did for me on the record. I would say like 80 to 90% of the time, it's, it's always, I'm always like, you know, one step ahead, switching pedals off and on before we, uh, a certain part comes up. And then I'll turn it on with the effects loop. And this really just, it gives it that record type of sound, you know. Um, not only what you tracked with, but other things you might have running uh, in parallel to the console or even in the box or whatnot. So it's really awesome. Uh, and then last in the chain is just this real simple um, DL8 delay looper from Hardwire. Um, I like it. I mean, I've, I beat the shit out of them. I have another one that's really beat, um, but this one a little nicer, so maybe that's why I took it on the road. But what he, what this is all set to do is basically, uh, you know, I'll turn on the loop, and then when I get going or there's a break where I'm have to like lay, uh, lay down the the foundation for what will become. Uh, a loop, I'll just press this down, record, and then, you know, start layering it, turn on other pedals, press it down, and just keep building layers. It's, um, yeah, it feels good, you know, powering it up, I know I'm going to be in good shape every night. With the stuff that's, you know, being put out by companies like Earthquaker, you don't need an 18 space rack on your tour or in the studio. You just need five minutes, if that, and these creative pedals that really allow you to do things that like, I don't know, 10 years ago, you really needed like five pedal boards to do. You know?